everyone welcome to jgk master class guys today we are going to learn about the lanthanide shift reagent which is also called chemical shift reagent in proton nmr this topic is very important for msc chemistry students you can see many questions on this topic every year almost and what is the application of this reagent if you have a complex spectrum how to simplify it all this discussion we will do in this video and you can find the easiest explanation of this topic so first we will discuss why we need lanthanide shift reagent or what is the application of it so you can see this reagent is very useful to spread out the complex nmr spectrum of a molecule so if you have a very complex spectrum means all the peaks uh, of uh, a molecule which you are going to study are like uh, having a coupled spectrum means you are not able to distinguish the peaks then it is going to use the lanthanide shift reagent you can take the help of it which increases the or spread out the spectrum into a wide range without increasing the strength of the applied magnetic field applied magnetic field like if you are working on 60 megahertz nmr let's say then instead of going to uh, 100 megahertz or 250 megahertz nmr where you can enhance the resolution of the complex spectra that is one method, but if you don't have the facility at your end, you have only 60 megahertz NMR with you and you have to work and simplify the spectrum with that, then you can take the help of lanthanide shift reagent. So basically, you can see here, this shift reagents are enolic beta dicarbonyl complexes of lanthanide metals. So you will see the example of it. Mostly you can find europium as a metal as a shift reagent which forms a paramagnetic complex which shifts the chemical shift to the higher frequency and it simplifies the spectrum almost to the first order spectrum. So you might have studied about first order spectrum, second order spectrum. First order means where you can distinguish the multiplicity, you can identify the peaks easily and its coupling. Where the second order is the where the peaks are coupled, merged together and you are not able to identify how many number of protons are there or how many different kinds of protons are there. It is called second order spectrum like example AB spectrum like A and B are close in the alphabet same way uh, it is uh, AB spectrum. For first order we call it AX spectrum like A and X are far apart in the alphabet similarly the peaks will be far apart. So you can see this uh, European complex, we will see uh, mostly uh, two widely used complexes are there. One is with the DPM and other is with the FOD. So what is the full form of it and the structure we can see here now. So EU DPM whole thrice, you can see here you have a beta dicarbonyl compound which is forming a complex, okay, with uh, this Europium, the full form is you have dipyroloid methanoate europium trace because you have a three molecules of this uh, ligand you can learn the structure msc students uh, to draw in your uh, question if this comes on length and i normally they ask you to write a short note another one is eu fod whole thrice so you can see here f is for fluoro o for octane and d for dionate so basically the name is coming from, so you always select the longest chain here. Longest chain is having 8 carbon, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And you can do the naming along with that heptafluoro because 7 fluorine are there. Dimethyl forces octane dionate europium complex. So this is the structure of FOD, europium FOD complex. You can uh, draw it. Now what is the condition? When this uh, lanthanide reagent forms a complex with your molecule, does all the molecule form a complex with the lanthanide? No. So, what is the condition is organic molecule must be able to donate the non-bonding electrons to the europium ion. So, basically the organic molecule which you are studying should have non-bonding electrons. So, you can say that when, like your uh, uh, arenes and uh, dienes doesn't form complex with lanthanide reagent because it doesn't have lone pair of electron. So, you can show in general like you have this europium complex and this is your organic molecule must have lone pair of electron which is capable of donating it to the europium. So, it is forming a 
complex with it and mostly you can see aldehyde, ketone, asters, alcohols, thiols, ethers, nitrous amines all interact with this europium reagent because all are having lone pair of electron to donate. So how it is impacting on the chemical shift? You can see chemical shift will be shifted by the dipolar coupling between the magnetic movement of the nucleus and the unpaired of electrons. So because of this interaction, dipolar interaction, the chemical shift is shifted to the higher frequency region. We can see, take one example. So if the question comes, you have to draw this spectrum to explain and justify your explanation that we are taking here example of the 6-methylquinoline. So 6-methylquinoline, uh, this is a structure. And uh, if uh, you submit this molecule for the proton NMR, you will get uh, this uh, normal record, the spectrum, normal spectrum. And you can observe here all the peaks are merged all together. So we are not able to find how many number of signals and peaks are there, different kind of proton are there. And their multiplicity is also all are not able to clear. So you can see here how many number of protons basically you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and you have 1 methyl also. So you have basically 6 different protons along with 3 methyl proton. So you should be able to distinguish it here in the spectrum. So this is a complex spectrum. You can consider it example of AB spectrum. The normal record spectrum is AB kind of second order spectrum. We have to convert it into first order or AX spectrum. That is, uh, with the help of, uh, you can take the europium uh, DPM complex, which form a complex with the organic molecule because it is having nitrogen. Lone pair of electrons are there, so it will form a complex with it. And through the dipolar interaction, the you can see here, uh, with this uh, simplified, uh, the shift reagent, the peaks are now... Uh, you can see it spread out over the range and now you are able to find out each peak clearly in this spectrum. So it is, uh, ex uh, you can say simplified. It is first order spectrum now, like you can say it is example of AX spectrum. So we have converted AB to AX spectrum or we have converted to second order to first order spectrum. And the best example and the technique is European DPN. And you can notice here, this lanthanide reagent is working on the 60 megahertz instrument only. Means both the spectrum are recorded at 60 megahertz instrument. Because the same result you can get when you enhance the resolution from 60 to 500 megahertz NMR. So you can simplify it. But if you don't have 500 megahertz NMR with you, then you have to work on the same instrument and enhance it or simplify it to first order spectrum with the help of lanthanide shift reagent. So now you can notice here, uh, with respect to the chemical shift value, you can find the peaks. The first peak you can notice, the, which falls in the upfield region, it is the carbon-7 proton, which is having one ortho proton, uh, proton with the ortho coupling with the eighth proton, and one is a meta coupling with the fifth proton, right? So you will have a doublet of triplet. Meta coupling is a weak coupling and ortho coupling is a strong. So you can see here you have a strong ortho coupling which gives you a doublet and this doublet is again going to split into a doublet with the five carbon multi meta coupling. So a weak coupling you can notice here. Then comes uh, the uh, proton five which is having the meta coupling from uh, proton seven and proton four. So you can notice here it is a doublet of doublet and uh, it's weak coupling. You are not able to identify it. And the carbon, this proton 3 is again having two strong ortho coupling. So doublet of doublet, one doublet because of the proton 2, other is from the proton 4. You can see easily two doublets uh, splitting. Doublet of doublet is very clear here. So this is appearance when you have uh, two ortho protons, okay, two ortho coupling. This is appearance at uh, 7 uh, when you have ortho meta coupling. Okay, so you can notice the pattern also. Then comes a uh, proton 4. So you can see the gradually the peaks are going to the paramagnetic zone, or you can say it is uh, shifting to the downfield shift. Here again, one ortho and one uh, you can notice meta coupling. 
So you can uh, see here, uh, it is quite similar to 7H uh, and 4H. So it is the uh, ortho and uh, meta coupling. Then comes your proton 8 uh, here, which is uh, having the meta coupling with an, uh, so here, you can notice here one ortho coupling is there only. Along with that, you can have a very weak para coupling, so not much enhanced. So this is the doublet uh, and uh, W shape uh, coupling is there with the other proton also. So slight splitting is there, but this is the doublet 8 AH uh, proton. And then lastly, you have the most downfield proton uh, that is proton 2 because it is uh, nearest to the nitrogen and so it is causing the downfield shift of it. And you can notice here you have one ortho proton and then you have a meta coupling also. So ortho meta coupling here and this is quite distorted. You are not able to distinguish and you can compare that the normal record uh, where you were not able to find the different type of signals here in uh, with the help of shift region. Now you can find out the different set of peaks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six set of peaks, one, two, three, four, five, six, six uh, aromatic protons. For six aromatic protons, you have six uh, uh, peaks in the aromatic zone. Definitely, you will have one uh, peak for the methyl, but that will come around uh, between one to two or one to three chemical shift value, which is not here indicated, so that you can easily distinguish that is not causing any problem in the uh, uh, like a simplification of the spectrum. So we have especially here zoom out the peaks in the aromatic zone. And so with the help of this uh, shift reagent, we are able to see uh, the uh, and simplify the animal spectrum of a complex molecule. So I hope uh, you got the very uh, like uh, this particular video is very helpful for you to understand now what is lanthanide shift reagent, what is the application of it. So till then, we'll see you in the next video. All the best. Bye-bye.